welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're learning about tracked vehicles once again, but something a little different today. Engineering tracked vehicles, and specifically the M1150 Assault Breacher Vehicle or AVB. Now I have a lot of respect for engineers, when I worked alongside them in the British Army as a tank mechanic, uh, they were launching some incredible pieces of equipment including Titan and Trojan, bridge layers and breaching vehicles of themselves, but this American vehicle is truly a vehicle to, I guess, totally and utterly respect. It is providing so much capability for armoured battle groups of the United States, and it deserves a bit of spotlight. Before we go into discussing today's armoured fighting vehicle, I'd like to talk about my sponsor for today's video, which is World of Tanks. Now, some of you might be quite surprised, but I actually used to play World of Tanks when I first started my channel, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really do encourage you guys to go check out the game. It is a free-to-play tank arcade game, which has a ton of vehicles in it, and I mean that in every sense of the word. There's a huge tank arsenal, tank destroyers, artillery, light, medium, and heavy tanks. How you play really is up to you, the way you go through your tech trees and the different countries that you can use. You can rush in guns blazing, ambush your opponents, sneaky tactics, hand back and take them out from afar. There's 550 different tanks and there's always a new way to play. Very enjoyable game. As I said, it is free to play, so you can go to the World of Tanks website, which I'll leave all the links in the description box below. It's free to win, meaning that skills win the battles for the most part, not the money. Um, you can join the you know online gaming community of millions of players. It's a huge community of World of Tanks. I'm sure many of you are watching this are probably already playing it, but this really reaches out to those people who haven't even tried it. Give it a go. It's got a lot of really fast-paced action. It's a, an addictive game for sure if you get into it. So now is a perfect time to get into the game. And if you are a new player, I've got a really good bit of news for you. There is an invite code that I have in the description box below saying as fire away, which is the code that you're going to use to get some cool little freebies and additional features for the game. It will contain the Matilda Black Prince Tier 5 tank, seven days of World of Tanks premium access to your account, one garage slot and 100% manned crew. You'll also get two rental tanks for 10 battles each, which is a Tiger 131 and the Sherman Firefly, which by the way is one of my favorite tanks of World War II. Now, if you do have interest in going to the website, please do so. The links are in the description box below, including the invite code. I encourage you to please go there. Make sure that if you are a new player, it is really only for you as the first time as you register on the Wargaming portal. So you need to use that invite link uh, with the invitation code and you'll be able to get some really cool, fun little features there that I just mentioned. So please, guys, go check it out at World of Tanks. So let's get back to talking about this beautiful engineering vehicle. The M1150 Assault Breacher Vehicle or AVB is probably one of the most wicked looking military vehicles in the world. The AVB operates as part of the Combined Arms Task Force and is assigned to be employed by combat engineers specifically. The ABV was developed to meet the operational requirements originally for the United States Marine Corps. It is also known as the Breacher or the Shredder. This combat engineering vehicle was specifically designed to clear pathways through minefields creating safe lanes for other vehicles at the breach. It allows assault units to move rapidly through obstacles before enemy forces establish defenses, but unfortunately at some times already inbound defenses in place. First prototypes of the ABV were completed in 2002. The breacher became operational in 2008 and in 2009 it saw combat in Afghanistan. The US Marine Corps ordered a total of 45 of these systems. The US Army, however, later on saw huge potential in this vehicle and actually ordered around 187 of these vehicles instead of the cancelled Grizzly. The Grizzly was a similar combat engineering vehicle but was cancelled in 2001 and never reached production. Maybe I'll do a video on it in the future. It's interesting to note that in the 1990s, the US Army decided it couldn't afford to continue developing the complicated, maintenance heavy vehicle of this purpose. The Grizzly program was cancelled in 2001 and therefore the prototype developed never really made it to any assembly lines. The US Marine Corps however persisted and funded its own development and testing of this vehicle. The main body of the final model of the Shredder was built by General Dynamics and the chassis was used from the M1A1 Abrams main battle tank. Pearson Engineering of the United Kingdom provided the specially designed plow and therefore the other mine clearing accessories to this vehicle. As you can see by just this simple bulldozer, simple little obstacles just like a berm or a hill of some kind can stop a tank in its tracks, literally. 
You'd be surprised at how much a berm can actually prevent a main battle tank like the Abrams progressing through the breaching point successfully. The 72 ton, 40 foot or 15 meter long vehicle is based upon the M1 Abrams for that specific reason, with its very powerful 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine fitted also with the 50 caliber machine gun to protect itself and of course the added reactive armor that could be placed upon the Abrams original hull and turret. The vehicle is also equipped with a front mounted 15 foot or 4.5 meter long wide plow supported by metallic skis that glide on the dirt allowing it to plow correctly and is armed with nearly 7000 pounds or 3175 kilograms of explosives on its back deck. Shredder is equipped with the M58 Mine Clearing Line Charge or Miklik as the main armament for breaching main minefields. This part of the Linear Demolition Charge System or the LDCS carries rockets of C4 explosives up to 150 yards forward detonating hidden mines or bombs at a safe distance so that troops and vehicles can pass through safely. This is one of the more cooler features of the vehicle but at the end of the day it can do just about anything in terms of clearing breaches. One of the main obstacles it cannot clear though is water. Now as impressive that the rocket projected explosive line charge is, it really only provides that close in capability. It's actually a feature that is more likely not to be used than trying to use the more standardized mine plow systems. The reason for this is that once these weapons are deployed it takes a long time to reload them and should only be really used on more emergency kind breaches. It is also effective against conventionally fused landmines when detonated and provides a large lane of 8 meters by 100 meters, which is significant for main battle groups to get through. Unfortunately, not quite wide enough to allow more than one vehicle at a time, but does the job. The vehicle's main feature, though, is the fact that it can breach through just about any berm or land feature that it comes across. The HLA or high life adapters provide a huge increased approach angle to the ABV. This allows rapid fitting and removal of the full suite of ABV front end equipment and subsystems. Specifically for clearing minefields, the FWMP or full width mine plow can be swiftly installed at the front of the vehicle which can then be rapidly replaced by the CDBB or combat dozer blades. That in addition to clearing battlefield obstacles can also be used to prepare fighting positions or knock down ones already in place. Another alternative installation at the front of the vehicle is the Pearson Engineering ROBS or Rapid Ordnance Removal Systems or an SMP Lane Marking System. The plow mounted onto the front of the ABV lets it construct hasty earthworks for cover and to barrel through enemy obstacles. The lane marking system is actually basically a stake system that fires little stakes out the back of the vehicle in the lane marking system to allow you to know exactly where the tank needs to stay in. These markers are given little reflective, I guess, tape to allow them to be operated at night also. In terms of protecting itself, there isn't a huge amount of capability for defending itself really with small arms. For the most part, it has the crew of two that will only have their small arms upon them and the 50 caliber BMG M2 machine gun mounted on top of the vehicle as purely a defensive armament. The gun can fire around 1000 to 1200 rounds per minute depending on the variant and an effective range of around 1800 meters which provides somewhat of some defensive measures but for the most part these vehicles are never going to be on their own and supporting the main battle group the Abrams main battle tank will always be giving it a little bit of support. One of the interesting main features of this vehicle that it was required for in combat was actually securing beachheads for the US Marine Corps. The vehicle weighs a whopping 72 tons and as you can see it's going to be quite the feat to move it from a landing craft to the beach. However, there is this capability done by the US Navy's amphibious haulers. The landing craft air cushion or LCAC which is basically a gigantic hovercraft and the landing craft utility or LCU. The LCU boat can accommodate the mass and width of one of the brutish vehicles. The LCUs can also run ship to shore logistics from the well decks of the Gator Navy's amphibious assault ships which can include transporting the shredder. Although the US Marine Corps is slowly pivoting away from focusing so heavily on large scale beach landing operations, being able to push very heavy combat vehicles ashore from over the horizon remains a critical capability and hence why this vehicle is still used today on breach clearings. Interestingly, the vehicles were never originally designed to be ABVs. The chassis for the ABVs were supplied from the army surplus stocks of Abrams and refurbished to a common standard with the current M1A1 Abrams MBTs used by the US Marine Corps. The M1 Abrams is obviously powered by the 1500 horsepower Honeywell AGT 1500 gas turbine and a 6-speed 4-forward 2-reverse Allison X1100 
3B hydrokinetic automatic transmission, giving it a governed top speed of around 45 miles per hour or 62 kilometers an hour. On paved roads, that is. On road, it's pretty fast. Off road, being that it's so heavy and cumbersome, it can only go at 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers an hour on cross country. The suspension of the ABV is composed on each side of seven road wheels and two track return rollers on each side of the chassis. The drive sprocket is mounted at the rear and the idler at the front, just like the main battle tanks. Surprisingly, there are also robotic controlled ABVs, and there were some recent tests done that were supported by the robotic Polaris MRZR vehicles, capable of creating smoke screens, as well as suppression fire units in which a real situation could either be manned or unmanned. Now, a breach is one of the most complex maneuvers during any type of military operation because there are so many components to it. To put it lightly, every gun, every cannon, everything that shoots a missile or a bullet is going to be aimed at that breach if they know you're coming, and so for the crew inside the vehicle, the breach is literally the worst place on earth. So the Army and the Marines are looking at robotic systems to smash through the breach, which soldiers and manned vehicles can then flow through. It makes sense to protect the crew members that are actually operating the vehicle from distance, considering it is literally going to be the first thing everything is going to be firing at, which you'd be surprised at, thinking that normally the main battle tanks take majority of the brunt of the hit. Obstacles are always going to stop the battle group, and this is the thing that is going to push it out of the way. It's unclear when the robotic ABVs are actually ready for deployment, but the army is continuing its envision of fielding about six per brigade with four mine plows to two with the combat dozer blades. And each vehicle would be operated by one person in either stationary or mobile command and control center vehicles. However, some of the challenges for this kind of variant is the including of electronic countermeasures going against it, such as jamming technology that could be used to the advantage of the enemy to incapacitate these vehicles on the breach, making them just as much as an obstacle as they were before. There was also concerns about what it would do if it dies mid-breach and just loses connection, inadvertently becoming just the exact kind of obstacle it was meant to obliterate. These are some of the things that the services will have to explore as they push forward on this technology, but for the most part, it makes complete sense to make these, if anything, the most automated platform of the Army or the Marine Corps of the future of the United States Armored Battle Groups. It's safe to say this vehicle is an absolute beast as protecting soldiers and you know, Marines and the like for generations to come. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's doing its job very, very nicely. And if you ever get to see a Miklik being launched, it is absolutely incredible seeing them actually detonate up close and personal. The blast wave can be felt from, you know, a kilometer away almost. It's huge. It's really, really cool to see. So that's it for today, everyone. I really do appreciate you stopping by and learning about the ABV, a really impressive beast of a engineering vehicle. I'd also like to thank World of Tanks for allowing me to uh, have sponsorship today for their game. And for those of you who weren't aware there's also some really cool news coming out from tank fest or the tank museum in bovington in the uk which uh, world of tanks will actually be involved in with the digital tank fest that they're working with the tank museum uh, at the end of june just coming up here so if you would like to learn more about that i would strongly encourage you to go check out the wargaming website and world of tanks website and you'll be uh, able to find out some interesting information or you can leave a comment section uh, comment and i will try my best to get an answer to you but reminder to everyone that if you are new to the game and you want to get into world of tanks go to the description box below if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos on my channel please click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can get some uh, updates of when new military videos come out and thank you to everyone who's been contributing towards my patreon and paypal if you want to subscribe or go to those please check out the description box also all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.